Um, this is the uh, first game weekend that I'd actually lived with James. I lived with my first year here at State. Uh, it was the LSU the Thursday game, and uh, yeah, we'd been out in the junction all day. Went to the game, got the crap beat out of us, but it was okay. Uh, came home, and Gustav was with us, and uh, it was the first time I ever met Gustav. And our, uh, our dryer caught fire. And James decided to, to pull the fire extinguisher out and make sure that the, uh, the fire went out. But then uh, after that first squirt, it wasn't, just, it wasn't enough. So he decided to let the, uh, let the fire extinguisher off inside of our living room. And it looked like it had snowed for about three weeks inside the living room. And our landlord had to come by the next morning and find two Swedes laying on our couch <laughs> with the fire extinguisher everywhere in the house. And uh, I remember me and him both had to go to a uh, class the next day. And uh, Sherry called us while we were in class. And I, we knew it wasn't good. And James just came in and grabbed his backpack. And he was like, take any notes you can. <laughs> I got to go talk to Sherry. And uh, they are all right with it after, after we finally told him what had happened. But she didn't really understand why we had to use the whole fire extinguisher for uh, one small dryer fire, but it turned out pretty hot. It was the first semester I'd met James up here at uh, Mississippi State in 2011. Uh, he wanted to take us on a hiking trip, and that's just how it was. He loved camping and outdoors, and he wanted to share it with anybody he could and try to teach him everything that he knew. And uh, <clears throat> we got out there the first night, we got there kind of late. And we didn't get to hike very far on the first night. Uh, so we just found this little shelf up above the river to set up camp. And uh, we got to sitting around the campfire and having a good time. And <clears throat> James decided we need to make us a bear bag. He just wanted to show us how to tie the knot in the tree to keep the bears from getting to it. So it's dark and everything, and all we got is flashlights. We tromp out through the woods, up a hill, almost a mountain pretty much. But then we've gotten forever away from the camp. And uh, decided to tie the bear bag up and everything. <clears throat> we go back down to the fire and uh, just go about our way and wake up the next morning to realize the bear bag is only about 100 yards from the campsite that we'd set in. And uh, <laughs> we didn't make it very far if there had been a bear. Uh, we might have still been in trouble, but uh, James just always wanted to show everybody what he knew about camping and outdoors. I really enjoyed it. So I was backpacking in Chile and Patagonia with James and a bunch of other people for about uh, two or three months. And uh, throughout that time I, devel I developed like, a really good friendship with him and uh, discovered how good of a guy he was. And there's a few things that I remember that showed how good of a guy he was. Uh, I remember one day we were out and um, it was cold, it was wet, I was tired. I hadn't slept in a long time and James was in the same boat. We were both just exhausted and I looked at him and I was just like, dude, this is hard. And he looked at me and he said, Ian, you know what? When the going gets tough, get tougher. And so I lived by that motto for the rest of the trip. I still live by it and it was one of the best things I've ever heard from anyone and I really needed it at that time. And James was there to tell me that and that was awesome. And um, also another morning we woke up at about, or I woke up at about five to make everybody breakfast and I was out in the rain and the wind and it was cold and James was in bed and he could sleep in for probably another hour and a half if he had wanted to. But instead, while everybody else was asleep, he came out and hung out with me while I made breakfast and we drank some coffee together and, you know, just hung out and enjoyed the wilderness and, you know, he didn't need to be out there but he knew that it would suck to be out there by yourself so he decided to come join me and it was really kind of him and, you know, he didn't have to do it but he was just such a good guy that he felt like he needed to. James is a good guy. Hey. My story about James was probably in 10th or 11th grade. Uh, we were getting ready to go on a ski trip with the church. And uh, he decided that he wanted to shave his head bald. So he, he keeps it hidden from just about everybody, but especially Mary Catherine. She has no idea, and he comes driving up, and 
couple of us go up to him, see him, I'm like, hey man, let's see your head. Lifts up this uh, beanie he has on and smooth baby bottom head. And, uh, he puts it back down and he says, no, I don't want to tell anybody yet. So, okay, so we all load up and get ready to go and we stop, we, we're flying ahead of everybody, stop and get some gas. And as the second van comes up behind us, James pulls that beanie off and just starts waving it in the air. About 10 seconds later, he gets a phone call. And you can just hear screaming through that phone. James Harold, did you shave your head? <laughs> we all die out laughing, have a good old time, just laughed. And that's what James was, just a buddy to have a fun time with, no matter who you were or what you were doing, just fun. So I, uh, I got to go on an Appalachian Trail hiking trip with James and, and some Boy Scouts. And um, one of the days we were hiking, uh, James and I got a late start. We were goofing around doing something. The group got really far ahead of us. Uh, and so we were fine with that. We were just going to go fast and catch up with them. So we were, we were booking it. And uh, we came across this like piece of paper laying in the trail. And James got all mad because somebody littered. He picked it up and he's reading this note as he's walking. And he reads it. And it's this long note that says that there is a hornet's nest on the trail. Be careful, don't step on it. And he, finished read, he finishes reading it out loud as he steps on this hornet's nest and starts to get stung by a hornet. So we had to take off running down the trail. When we caught up with the rest of the group, he like yelled at Mr. Carl and everybody else for not putting that note farther away from the nest. It was like perfectly timed so that he would step on it. Uh, and on a more serious note, um, when I started uh, working at the church uh, as the youth pastor, I was, uh, James, uh, James told me um, the first day, I think that I was there, a story about him uh, tying up the old youth pastor in his office during a lock-in. Uh, had, they had all used their belts together to tie the door shut. Uh, so I realized the first day there that if I wanted to be successful at that church, I needed to be on James's good side. Um, and you know that's funny, but it, it's true too, and in a very real way. James was a leader um, of, of that youth group, and uh, I think a, a large reason we had uh, success in the youth group is because of James' leadership um, and the way people loved being around him. Um, he made everybody uh, feel like he was uh, they were their, they was his best friend, uh, and no matter what we did, he made it fun. Uh, he had a unique uh, gift um, to make things fun, just to be around him, uh, and I'll, I'll never forget that. Where do I look? Uh, at the camera. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Well, junior year in high school, um, some kids from my AP World History class went to Rome. Um, me, James, Jordan, and Will were in, in that group. And um, we were on the subway in Rome, and this Italian guy started heckling us for being American. And we knew that he was heckling us because our tour guide got a little flustered. And we all were kind of just like, wow, this guy's really rude. So James um, looks straight at him and starts talking to him in Swedish. And the guy was just like, huh? What? Whoa, whoa, what? And James is just like, like, we have no idea what he's saying. And he's just over there just like talking to him, like, and it sounds like coherent sentences. And he's just like, oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm, what I'm, and, you know, I'm assuming that's what he's saying in Italian because. It's cozy means it, I'm sorry. So uh, we get off to the next stop and we're like, James, what did you say to this guy? And he goes, oh no, the potato is brown. Uh, whatever Gustav taught me, uh, I don't know. And James just had this, he could turn any situation into something incredibly funny and it just was something I really liked about him. So, so I was also on James's Noel's Patagonia trip and firstly, I just owe a huge apology to James's whole family because I'm the one responsible for his atrocious um, mullet. I promise it's exactly what he asked for. He said he just wanted a Joe Dirt mullet and a girl can't pass up a chance to give a backcountry haircut <laughs> like that. Um, I remember uh, James had great euphemisms. I remember my favorite of his was me asking him, James, how are you doing today? And 
He would look at me and say, well, I woke up today, my two legs worked, and I could see, so I'm doing all right. That was one of my favorites. And, um, but beyond that, I remember one day, we were hiking together, and I looked at him and I said, James Harrell, who are you? I know all of your goofy habits and come to love you as a friend, but who is James Harrell? And I remember him saying, well, when I look at a doorknob, I don't just see a doorknob. I see all of the parts and what it's made of and how it comes to work the way it works. And I think about how the door was built and how all the planks came together to build the house. And I remember him saying that in combination with his math puzzles, the Ken Kens that we'd always do together. And it just made me realize that James was brilliant. He had this incredible mind that uh, just immediately went to work to solve any problem ahead of him. And, that incredible mind in combination with a beautiful, beautiful heart made him a fantastic expedition mate and uh, an even better friend. He'll always be loved. All right, one of my favorite stories about James is when he came up to see me in Jackson and uh, my parents were making me pull up the deck with a crowbar and uh, James got there and he just got his Jeep, just put a winch on it and we're sitting on the back porch talking about it James said, let me pull my Jeep around and hook up my winch to it and just tear it all down. I was like, all right, James, you think it'll work? And we did it, and he tore down the whole back porch in about 30 minutes. Saved me a lot of time, but that's the way James was. He always had a great imagination for how to solve something and fun way to do it. I went with James to Chile, and we were sea kayaking to this glacier called Glacier Bernardo. And when we got there, there was a glacial lake right in front of this mass, right in front of the massive glacier. And uh, James, was, we were all out there, and James got the bright idea: let's swim out to that iceberg that's floating right there. And so we all said, "Okay, yeah, let's let's do it." So everybody's going, everybody's going. Then it came time for James to do it. He's like, "Nah, man, nah, I'm not doing it. I'm not going." <laughs> like James, you have to go. It was your idea. You can't back out now. And so it took us like five or ten minutes to convince him to go, but he finally decided to get into the water, but what he didn't realize is that he'd actually made it harder on himself because every time somebody went out to the iceberg, it went farther and farther back, and uh, so he ended up having to go actually farther than anybody else out to the uh, iceberg for being so hard-headed and not wanting to go out like he said he wanted to. <laughs> um, gosh, I can't even think of anything that I've ever done that I don't even know where to begin. James has put me through so much the past, what? Six years, we dated six years, and then however many years after that. Um, I guess one of my favorite memories that I said I wish I could relive over now, and even though I hated him at the time for it, he used to sit on me and put his dad's police handcuffs on me and take off with the key. <laughs> and I would walk around the house half the night with handcuffs on. <laughs> um, and there was numerous times where he put my purse in the freezer and shot my phone off a two-story balcony and oh, anything that boy could do to just to mess with me. Gosh. So I was on James's Patagonia trip as well and uh, I think James is just one of my best friends ever, ever since that trip. And I have so much love for him, and my nicknames for James, I think, are very telling. I call him either King James or Dr. James, and I call him Dr. James because about three weeks into our first section, I sliced the bottom of my foot open on a big barnacle, bleeding everywhere, thought I was going to get evacuated, and every day, every evening, James would clean the bottom of my foot out and pick out little pieces of sand. Um, and any piece of dirt with a pair of tweezers and disinfect it and then bandage it up. And we do that every single evening and every morning. And he just, he did every little thing like that with such care and such diligence. And it allowed me to stay on that trip and allowed me to grow as a friend with James. And I am so appreciative for that. And then as I think about, I was lucky enough to spend uh, 
a 12 day sec our 12 day section on the glacier uh, in the same tent group as James and I remember so many of the nights falling asleep and being in the tent and James and I would often reminisce on our families and reminisce on what we missed and what we thought of home and what we wanted to do when we got home and for me uh, James just spoke with so much love and appreciation of his entire family and his entire extended community. And that was something that I found truly beautiful in James. And uh, to everyone here, I know how much he loved everyone. And his ability to love people and to give to people and just to be a kind-hearted, absolutely genuine person is so unique and so special. And I'll remember James for that forever and ever with so much love. So, thank you. Um, I didn't know James that well, but the few times that um, I got to spend time with him, uh, he had a very great impact on me. Um, first thing I noticed about him uh, was he just had a huge heart. He always had a smile on his face. Um, he just loved life and he um, made the best out of everything. And, um, I, I can remember the first time I met him, he just made me feel like I was his best friend. And um, he had that impact on everybody that I saw around him. And um, I guess the, the most fond memory I can think of James is uh, one of the first times I met him, um, a friend of mine took me over to his family's uh, uh, Christmas celebration and uh, they were exchanging presents and uh, you know, nobody there really knew me, uh, but they accepted me into their home. Um, and James told me that you know everybody here is family, and uh, they uh, everybody was exchanging presents, and they uh, he he gave me a present, and um, and it was actually a cross. It was actually just a little decorative uh, metal cross, and uh, I still have it in my room today. And I can remember running into him uh, he, recently, probably a year ago, and he asked me if I still had it. And I said, yes, I, I still have it displayed in my room and I see it every day. And he said, you know, that, that's good. I'm, I'm glad that you know, we had the opportunity to, um, uh, to have it, uh, an impact on you like that. And, uh, those, that that's my story. Thanks. Oh, hello there. Um, anyway, I just here and I want to tell you, say a few words about Mr. James Thomas Harrell. Uh, he was a uh, kind of guy that, you know, I've known him my whole life. Uh, we had many adventures together. Some, you know, are better left there than what they are now. But I remember one day we're all at his house and, you know, I think his parents went out of town or something. So we were going to cook some hamburgers and we were hanging out and he was, he wanted to show me this trick that he taught. His brother Robert found this stuff called Mohawk from Texas and it was this amazing trick where you could do that you could blow fireballs. And so therefore, I had no idea what it was. I've always seen it on TV and everything like that. So anyway, long story short, we're getting up there and he's training me one-on-one -on -one how to blow fire with a lighter. And the next thing I know, my hand's on fire, we're putting it out. It's just a long story short. And I mean, it was just an amazing moment, you know, that no matter what you did with the kid, he was, he was always, his mind was just, boggling, just mind blowing to me because you never knew what was going to happen when you were hanging out with James Harrell. You didn't know if you were going to blow up something, you're going to tear something up, which more likely you probably were. Uh, I mean, anything to do with fire or outdoors or wood, the kid can make absolutely anything I've ever seen in my life. He could get a rock and turn it into an arrow. I mean, you would be surprised and he was just an all around great kid. I mean. His parents, I mean, they could not have asked. I mean, they were I'm, a great, I mean, a great family. And uh, and now he was always so, always loved hanging out with me because he was always, he was so big. He was always, he'd see somebody say, man, I could talk smack today. I got Jay Ray on my side, you know. And he'd be down here, I'm like, yes, yeah, my little brother, you know. He's, but he was always just a go-getter type deal. And I think that's one reason why I passed college, because he was in state at the time as well. But um, anyway, I just, um, the kid was just, I can't, had so many words to say, but one thing that really I admired from him was, was he was always talking about his family. He loved his family more than anything in the world. 
and he always wanted them to be there and he wanted them to know that they loved him as much and I respected him for the way that they're family oriented and the kid was just I can't put, I can't even tell you stories about the boy. But he um, he was a good kid and he's truly gonna be missed. And uh, I know this it's it's gonna be a tough time from now on here on out, but I know that, that deep down in my heart that he's watching over us and he always knows that everything's gonna be alright and he's gonna he's always gonna be here with us, each and every one of us. And uh, he's gonna be one kid I'll never forget. He taught me a lot of things about life and I tried to teach him some and but uh, I'm gonna miss the kid. So I got it. The most, the biggest thing about James Harrell is he was probably the most passionate person that I've ever met, and his biggest passions were his family and his friends. And Stevie was his best friend. And as soon as I started dating Stevie, he accepted me right away, and he befriended me too. But James, Stevie was his best friend. So if I even gave Stevie a look with an attitude, he would tell me every time, "Don't look at my best friend like." And James, as soon, every time Stevie came into town, he wanted um, Stevie to be with his family and him. So one time we went to Easter um, over there and he was introducing me to everyone. And it was Easter egg hunt and there was money in the eggs. And even though it was like our first time to be there, James just left and went around and gathered all the eggs. And he ended up winning the most money that day out of everyone. And he was just real competitive, but it was always in a great way. He might even took us out to eat that night, probably, with his money. <laughs> but, and I remember his Jeep. The first time I met him, he came to Florence in his Jeep, and him and Stevie called it a nickname. And um, they would drive around constantly with it and come pick us up. And James Harrell would always tell me that he never knew who I was with, but whoever I was with, he accepted for right off. So. I, James accepted me, and I loved him every day for that. Well, um, James and I were best friends for a really long time since we were kids. And, you know, he could do anything, and he thought since he could do anything, everybody else should be able to know how to do all that stuff. So we were probably, I was probably in the sixth grade when he taught me how to ride a dirt bike. And when I say taught me, I mean put me on it and said just, just twist the thing. So he starts me off in the gravel. So first time ever even been on a dirt bike. His dog Tristan is asleep in the driveway and I just threw it back, ran right over Tristan and <laughs> and he was like, don't start it in the gravel. What are you an idiot? Don't, you don't ride a dirt bike in the gravel. And I'm like, how am I supposed to know this? I've never ridden a dirt bike in my life. So we argue for about 20 minutes and then he tells me he's never teaching me how to drive anything again. Well, years later, when we both get vehicles, I don't have a stick shift, never driven a stick shift, and of course he thought I should have known how to do it. So we start at the top of my driveway, I'm in the driver's seat, and he said, all right, Megan, I'm teaching you how to drive a stick shift. So he explains everything, how to do the clutch or whatever it's called, and I almost flip it down my entire driveway I don't know what gear I'm in. Next thing I know, he's in my lap, hollering at me, what, what are you doing? Do you not know how to drive a stick shift? And I said, no, that's what I told you when you tried to teach me how to drive a stick shift. So later that day, we were riding in uh, the back of my parents' neighborhood, and there was this old abandoned train. And these train tracks have been closed for years. And he, just, he convinces me to climb on top of this train and jump all the cars. And I am nervous, we're up really high, I'm thinking this train's about to take off, they just stop for a quick second, they're about to keep going again. And we jumped probably 30 train cars and just laughed and laughed and laughed. And next thing I know, the spiders had built huge webs in between the trees that the train tracks were going through. And so he turned around, making sure I jumped the cart okay, turns back around, walks right into a big cobweb, and spider is in his hair. And I'm like, James, James, you have a spider in your hair. And he, of course, flips out, starts moving his hair all around, and he's like, oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And at that time, we decided that it was time to get off the train. So we got off the tri train, went back to my parents' house, and I don't, he, he was so ambitious, and he 
could do about anything. He, he feared nothing. He never feared anything. And I respected James for that, and I love James for that. And I'm, I'm so thankful for the things that he taught me and about friendship and about, you know, family and about just not how to drive a stick shift. <laughs> One of the sweetest memories I have of James is, um, I think it might have been my junior year of high school, we were um, coming down from Memphis to West Point to visit, and um, it was about a month before prom, and just out of the blue, we were sitting at their house, and James said, do you have a dress yet? And I said, you know, no, I don't have a dress yet, I'm too thick, you don't have anything. And, um, James said, no, we're going to go shopping, and so we went in his Jeep, um, and he took me all around West Point and Starkville and Columbus um, dress shopping all day long, like all Saturday, we went prom dress shopping, and it was just the sweetest thing. Um, he helped me pick out dresses, he sat there and watched me try them all on, told me which ones he liked, told me which ones he did not like, um, and we ended, I mean, we didn't find a dress, um, but it was just one of the sweetest things to see, um, you know, our whole life, um, he was always taking care of me, um, he was so selfless, always making sure that, you know, we were do doing something that I enjoyed, um, and so, you know, I'll just never forget that he took his Saturday in his big old Jeep and took me to um, prom dress shopping, so, um, it's going to miss him a lot. I um, have it on here, but I just can't really speak out of it. Um, I have too many stories to even choose one, but I will say how much James meant to me and how much I love him and how much he changed my life. It was my first kiss under the kindergarten step, and when they asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, when I was in kindergarten, I said, I want to be a teacher and marry Jane Terrell. And though I am doing the first part, it truly breaks my heart I can't do the second, even if we were each other's backups. Since I was four, James, Will, and Jordan would always make me fun of the joke. And um, by the time I was in fifth grade, I was probably a foot taller than all of them. And um, they would always make fun of me. And even though I was super embarrassed, I knew that they always did it out of love and do still do it out of love to this day. <laughs> Um, and I just wanted to thank the Heralds for always being there for me my whole life. And um, I love you, and I will miss you very much. Uh, James is one of the best friends. He was the best friend I could ever ask for. Um, we did so much together. We uh, scuba dive, canoe, kayak, rock climb. I mean, there are very few things James didn't do in life, and uh, I spent some of the best times of my life with him. Uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, after our uh, Compelling trip to Tishanigo State Park. Uh, we came back here and uh, James decided it would be a great idea in the middle of the night to go canoeing in Tibby Creek. And at the time, it did seem like a great idea. So uh, we take the Ranger and we go riding. We almost flip it over in the pond and then we uh, get, have to get it unstuck. And then we uh, ride down the Tibby Creek and we go throw the canoe in the, in the, in the creek. And uh, it's James and Stephen and I, and we have one paddle, no life jackets, and pretty much nothing but like a case of beer with us. So we're like just canoeing down the Kibby Creek aimlessly in the middle of the night, can't see anything. We don't even have a flashlight. And so, but with James, you never knew what you were going to get into. Um, I mean, I was with him, and we would take his Jeep and ride it down the cart path at Old Waverly, just crazy stuff like that. But it was a lot of fun, and uh, you know. I'll miss James very much. Uh, he was a big part of my life, and uh, you know, you don't have friends like that. Where do you want to look into the camera? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I guess if I really had anything to think about or say about James, you know, there's I've spent my whole life with him. I grew up. He was right behind me, so there's just. It's kind of hard to just kind of pick out one experience that really stands out to me. I think about when we were younger, going to Colorado together, and having him be on that trip with me, or just the countless Christmases here that we'd spend together, and you know, just how he was always just kind of a presence around this house. I guess that's kind of what I'm going to miss the most, is just that smile and, you know, just, it's just always so much fun to have him around. Just such a positive energy all the time. He just 
seemed to bring life into whatever room he went into or just wherever he went, just just a great presence, you know, just a fun, jovial person, you know, always can make you laugh, just, uh, just biggest smile. I'm really gonna miss that, you know, he just, God, they just don't make guys like Jane, they just kind of come around every once in a while and I just can't really imagine what it's going to be like coming back here and not having James around to make me laugh or crack a joke or, you know, just be the James that we all know and love. But I know that wherever he is, he's making everyone around him very happy and I can't wait to see him again someday. Okay. Well, I'm happy I got to spend my last Thanksgiving with James and we got to sit together and I got to hear about his South America trip and he was asking me about school and I'm just gonna miss how much he genuinely cares about everyone. And such a sweet, caring person and that very distinctive voice and smile and laugh that just brightened everyone's day. We miss you and we love you. I also am thankful that I got to spend my last Thanksgiving with James seeing him a week ago and just giving him a hug and wishing him, you know, the best of luck on his hiking trip. I just, I'll always remember that moment in Mimi's front porch, just how great that kid was and how much we dearly miss him. We love you, James. I'm also very thankful that I got to spend my last Thanksgiving with James, playing pool with him and hearing stories and stuff. And James was a great person. He really loved the outdoors, mommy and papa, and We'll miss him a whole lot. We love you, James. I just always remember growing up with James being my um, childhood best friend, and uh, I would just always be such a tomboy around him and his brothers. And um, I remember Uncle Bob taking us to the river one day, and um, James saying, hey, let's jump off the boat while it's going. So I'm like, okay, let's do it. And so I, we all jump off, and I'm just laying there out of breath, and I can't breathe. And they're like, that was awesome. And I'm just like, oh, that was so much fun. <laughs> like, just trying to act like such a boy. And he's just always so nice to me, and always just so loving. And I would always go to him for advice, and I just miss him so much. And um, love you. <laughs> I'm also thankful for the um, day I saw James at Thanksgiving and we ate and we hugged. Um, I'm also thankful that we got that last chance to see each other before he passed away. I love you, James. <laughs> um, I'll never forget the time that I rode my dirt bike into the lake <laughs> and James saved me and he saved me so many times after that when I just needed someone to talk to and when I felt like I didn't have any friends, he was always there and he was a good he was a good person to look up to. I love you, James. I always remember James is just a great kid with a big heart. I'll always remember his huge smile and his contagious laugh, um, especially when I would see him over the holidays or whenever we'd come down to Mississippi and He'd always not just ask you how you were doing, but he'd also be like, how's school, you know, how's life, what are you up to? Like, really interested in everything he had to say, and I think that just showed a lot of character about him. He really cared about the people around him and wanted to know what was up with everyone, and I just feel really good this. Love you, James. I remember James specifically, when I think about James, I remember the outdoors. I remember him loving land, loving life, loving family and loving friends, but most of all, he loved the outdoors. I remember growing up, he would always, always want to go mud riding um, on four-wheelers specifically. We would always go through mud. That's, for some reason, my main memory is mud. Every time I think about James, it's mud and land. Um, we used to just always play in the mud, and we had so many mud pictures. <laughs> I don't know if your cousins, y'all remember. Um, I just, that's just the one thing that describes James in one word, is just outdoors. He just loved adventure. He just had such a passion for that and I'll always be thankful for our childhood memories and our adult memories and just every memory with him. Um, he will greatly be missed. 
I love you, James. Uh, James was a good family friend of mine, and every time me and my family came to Mississippi every summer, he'd always act like really interested about my life and ask me what was going on. The last time I saw him was the 4th of July. Um, we would just talk about everything, and he asked me about going to college and everything. He was just the sweetest guy, and I hope really do this. Everybody knows James was just this outdoor adventurous guy. One year on the canoe trip, it was a late night. James came and woke me up with Marcus, Stephen Ray, and one other person. I can't remember who. We were out there and we were just, it was probably two o'clock in the morning. We were out there in the woods just rolling around. Sure enough, next thing you know, we're all sitting there shining these lights on each other, doing all this dumb stuff. We see this, we see this car come up, it's the cops. We're sitting, sitting there with this big blue flashlight shining around, searching for us. And we sit there and we turn the lights off, we turn all our flashlights off, we're being loud as anything. Next thing you know, with no lights, James was able to get every single one of us back to the campsite within five minutes. Not knowing anywhere where we were or anything, he just used outdoor skills and got us right there in five minutes. Man, he's just the most, uh, the most outdoor guy you'll ever know. He loved it. It's unbelievable. James, I always remember you as like the best cousin we've ever had, and we all really miss you. And uh, you know, this one story that uh, me and uh, my brother and them, they were kind of picking on me, and uh, you always stepped up and uh, told everybody to back off and leave me alone and stuff. Oh, I really miss you. What to say about James? What to say? Many good stories about James. I remember this one time when we were on the canoe trip. I think it was in 2010. Well, anyway, it was me, James, um, one of James's coaches, and I think Cooper. Anyway, we were just setting down because we decided to stop at one of the places on the thing, and they decided to build a big as fire, kind of language. So anyway, they go to this branch in the middle of the lake and just start pouring gasoline all over it. I was like, I'm just looking at Sarah, it's like, what in the world are they gonna do? So anyway, a few minutes later, they light that sun up and boom, it went up. It was crazy, but I could tell everybody was having a good time there. <sighs> gonna miss you, James. Thanks, bud. Another thing uh, about James is how, how great he was outdoors. He just he was at home there. And I'll never forget on a canoeing trip we went on one year, and James woke a few of us up in the middle of the night, about 3 a.m. He woke me up, he woke up Brian Luttrell, Stephen Ray, and Clark Atkins. Pitch black dark, James gets us and we hike about a mile into the woods, not knowing where we're going. We're Turn left, turn right, just going in and out everywhere. And we were loud, we had our cell phones out, lights, and just being mischievous. And uh, we looked up across the road and there's a light shining on us. And we were wondering what it was, and then all of a sudden the blue lights start flashing, and we needed some cops. And so we all turn off our phones, we don't have a flashlight, and James takes off running, and we're following him. I don't know how, but he got us straight back to camp, about a mile in the woods. So that's just that's just how he was. He's still at home in the outdoors. Um, oh my god. When you think of James Arrow, what do you think about? He always takes time to ask how he's doing and what else he needs to learn on his days. He's just like, what are you doing? I guess. Uh, I just want to say that I love James a lot and uh, he and I talk a lot and I enjoy listening about what he was up to and, and what he was looking forward to and, uh, and one of the things I really loved about him was how much he truly loved 
and participated in my children uh, playing games with them. Even though he may not have felt like it, uh, if they asked him to play, he played. And I think that's important uh, for a young adult to get involved with children and set an example for them. He was truly really a wonderful example for my children and all that stuff for I just want to say thanks to all the people that came out and gave a tribute to one of our best friends that we all grew up with. Um, it's truly inspiring to hear a lot of stories from a lot of different people that we normally wouldn't hear. So I just want to thank y'all for doing that. Um, I think it's pretty apparent that changing the world starts with impacting individuals on an individual basis and touching parts of individual people. It's safe to say that we're dealing with a world changer here because James has impacted many lives in many different ways. He's one hell of a kid, I'm telling you. And there's not many people I know that lived a life like James Harrell did. There's probably 80 year old grown men and women who haven't done half the things that that kid has done. That's truly inspiring. That kid taught me how to truly live life. Not live life, just walking each day, just aimlessly wandering around this earth and not truly knowing where I'm going, but just truly live life to the fullest. That kid lived life every day like it was, like it was his last day. And I know that everybody that knows James Harrell knows that. And I hope that it inspires everyone, like it did me, to live a full life. If it wasn't for James Harrell, there'd be a lot of things I hadn't done. I've been scuba diving with that kid. I've been thrown off a rock wall with ropes that he tied up to a tree and he said, you'll be all right. Been mud riding with him. I've been stuck in water. I've been canoeing with that kid. You name it, we've done it. We're gonna miss you, man. I love you, buddy. And I love your family. You all know I love you. Thanks for being a part of my life. I mean, you're seeing it. Yep, we're going. Oh, man. We're going now. We're going. All right, let's see. James, James was special to me. Of all my grandsons, I, I grew up, uh, my mother was a big discipline person. And I get on my grandchildren a good bit. And uh, James was the only one that really understood me. He he knew that I was disciplined for a good reason. And uh, he, he seemed to appreciate it. And I, I never will forget one time, Samuel Jackson had been dirt riding, messing up my yard. And I went, I caught him and I chewed him out. And I felt kind of bad about it. And I said, uh, James Thomas, was I too hard on him? No, Papa. He deserved every bit of it. He should have been getting chewed out a long time ago. He did just right. And uh, it, that made me feel pretty good. And a little bit later, he said, uh, he said, you know, I, 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 uh, I didn't mind you disciplining me, but I tell you what, Clark is scared to death of you. <laughs> 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 and uh, James, he was just a man of good character and high ideas. And, and, and tonight at the funeral, uh, I need to stop. Nope. Uh, two people came up to me. One was Mark Hazard. And uh, he told me about, I don't know what store he was in. He said, but this uh, lady was reading newspaper, black lady. And she, uh, she was reading about James Thomas, and she said, uh, I was in his class, and uh, he never failed to put his arm around me, and uh, everybody in the whole classroom uh, loved me. He always spoke to everybody. And then another gentleman there told me about uh, he was at a shell station. And this other child uh, started crying real loud, and somebody asked him what was wrong with her. 
and she said, uh, my classmate James Thomas Harrell died. He was he was super nice. He was super special to everybody, and everybody in the classroom loved him. And that really touched me. And I knew that he was a good guy, but I, all these stories I heard, it was another one too, but it take too long to tell. He just he's heard more good stories about him. He, we hiked together and we uh, went on the Appalachian Trail. We went down Buffalo Rivers. And he was a real outdoorsman, a real sport. If you could describe James in one word, what would you say? I mean, he had a good character in high That's it's good stuff. If you could tell James one thing, if James was sitting right here, what would be the thing that you told James? I would tell him, but he told me that, and I told him that other time, so I would tell him I loved him. And that's, he told me that two hours before he died, and he loved me, and I told him, so I have that memory. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you.